Hi everyone, it's me, B at Kelly Sunflower. So I thought I'd hop on and show you one of my latest books that came that arrived today. So this is called um, Pamela Corwin Smith, Tarot Artist, The Pious Pixie by Dawn G. Robinson. So let's have a flip through. So this is published by a company called Font Hill. Um, first published in the United Kingdom and the United States of America in 2020. It's got here um, British Library publication um, data and copyright of Dawn C. Robinson. So I'll just read you um, the acknowledgements. So it says here, This was a project born of my burning desire to know more about a woman I encountered writing my book Secret Bood. Exploring Pamela's life was at times all-consuming. Her story requires a team of researchers and limited budget, but this is the work of one person. Therefore, any errors of interpretation are mine alone. Pamela's later life, which unfolds in stunningly dramatic Cornwall, particularly entranced me, but I soon realised I could not understand her end without knowing more about her beginning and her transitions. Pamela had so many labels attached to her, it was surprising but gratifying to find no conclusive evidence for most of them. Gratitude and many thanks are very much due to the wonderful gentleman introduced by late Barbara Alexander, the late Tony Edwards, the only person I met who knew Miss Smith, Pamela's errand boy imbued, Tony's oral recoll recollections helped immensely. Aptly named Sister Benegas is the keeper of the Diocene ar archives for the Catholic Church. She provided me with what felt like a breakthrough in uncovering a collection of letters from Pamela to, the, to then Bishop of Plymouth with a few responses. She was happy to let me see and use them. These convinced me my hunch about Pam Pamela's devotion to Catholicism and a sense of mission, uh, so a sense of mission was correct. Lynn Holhouse, the talented bood artist who gave me space to write in her delightful studio, also created a unique artistic representation of Pamela, whose image watched over me as I sat writing and editing. A version is included in this book. At the 11th hour, Angie Hodds of the Catholic History Society visited Park Graceland yielding amazing photographs of Pamela's home, as it is now, including one of, of her chapel. I am immensely grateful to Angie and her husband, Phil Hodds, for their invaluable help and to Hayley White for our discussion at Park Garland. When I visited, it was derelict. Susanna Dark, intuitive tower classes in Bude, helped me to spark my interest. Lorraine Puerto Rico Terran of the Ben Coulian Inn, the site of Pamela's flat, was um, delightfully helpful. Jackie and Brian Adams, who knew Father D. Monty Brown, Pamela's priest, were an informative delight. Ray Boyd kindly provided me with, with old photographs and information, especially of the Strand, to help me gain a feel of my beloved bood in the 1940s, where Pamela lived in the town. Thanks also to Darren Jones for his splendid image of Pamela's work with her toy theatre to the National Trust for photographs from Small Phil to the Royal Shakespeare Company for the images from Stratford to the LSE Women's History Collection for images that made me realise what a huge movement um, women's suffrage was, and to my mother-in-law, Dorothy Welsh, who lent me an original copy of Ellen Elaine Terry's memoirs containing some of Pamela's artwork. Susan Mayer, curator for the National Trust at Ellen's Terry 
Smallville, home in Kent, was hugely helpful and informative, showing me incredible, unpublished, full-colour artwork of Pamela's. There are many others who took time to assist, including academics Melissa Boyd Parsons, Professor Catherine Coxon, sorry, Cockin, Professor Kathleen Payne, Mary Greer, the Catholic History Society artist Jane McKay for her insights on um, Symphomasia and Susan O'Keefe from the from the Yeats Society. To my publisher, Fontal Media, for having the faith in my book and providing helpful guidance. Last, but very much not least, my good friends who have listened to me for what feels like years, talking endlessly about Pamela's accompanying me on visits, helping me research, answer questions, debating ideas, and listening to my indecent chatter. Helen, Joanne, Tim, Vivian, I thank you all. Okay. So, um, the content says, The pious Pipsy, childhood bird of passage, a woman of colour, her letters to Big Low Pain, mixing with great and good, the flavour of rejection, Elaine, Tar- so Elaine Terry, surrogate mother, earning some pennies, bad bohemians, the, the Yeats connection, fine artist of Joblin illustrator, a diluted tarrant, symmetria or simple technique, seeking meaning, mysticism and religion, Pamela, the outsider, no Brooklyn Bell, the woman question, Pamela's love life, the sapphire, the sapphic rumour, once a Catholic, the mission years, her Cornish exile, the Catholic correspondence, testing times, um, booed Miss Smith, did Pamela die a pauper? So these are what, what the um, chapters are. And I'll just show you some of the photographs that are in this um, book as well. I'm dying to read this book. So let's just look at some of the photographs. So you've got this one here, which is a fascinating original photograph of Pamela dressed in Guzanga, um, courtesy of David, courtesy of Darren Jones from the second-hand copy of the Russian Ballot. The book was bequeathed by a lady called Claudia Aiton Lee to a private reference library run by the Old Vic Theatre in 1955. Then we've got this picture here. I think that must be Pamela there. And it's got here Pamela with Elaine, Elaine Tor- Terry and friends in her early 20s. Oh, Pamela is the bottom right. Yeah, this is Pamela is dressed much more conventionally for her outing to Anne Hathaway's cottage in Stratford-upon-Avon, 1902, with Shakespearean actress Elin Terry and women thought to be Castabel Marshall and Lisa Jardine, under licence from the Royal Shakespeare Company. Got this picture here of Pamela. So left, which is this one, Inspired by Darren Jones' photo boot artist Lynn Holhouse, created a large four-colour painting of Pamela as Goethe Lissinger. Lynn's, pa- Lynn's painting portrays her partly in shadow, representing the different elements to her character. Never previously published, the image is used with permission of the artist. And then below, it's got here Pamela with Christopher St John... E.D. Craig and probably Tony Artwood, um, who's a creator. And the dates of this photograph is 1932. We've got some more photographs here. And up at the top here, you've got um, Lawrence and Clements Holzman, from 1910, this brother and sister duo founded the Suffrage Altar with Alfred Pess. The Attila 
which ceased in 1914 on the outbreak of the war, was used by WP, sorry, WSPU, which is Women's Social and Political Union, um, for, for propaganda purposes. And this is from the, women, from the Women's Library of the LSC. That's the London School of Economics. And then here, bottom left, you've got a um, letter of complaint to the bishop dated the 28th of July, 1929, about the problems in securing priests to offer mass on the lizard. By this time, the Catholic Church of St. Michael's, the um, archangel, had opened in Million, that's in Plymouth. And then above right, which is this one, is it this one here? This is a letter from Pamela to Elaine and Edie in 1927. So it's about her Catholic mission and it explains in fine detail many problems of, in obtaining priests for services. There's a couple more letters here. So these are all letters. This looks like one of the cards. So the, this here, um, this one here that I'm pointing to, is an image drawn to music by, I can't pronounce this, it's S-C-H-U-M-A-N-N in 1812. It's a stark, um, solitary work containing bleak, dissolute representations of humanity. Pamela is using and promoting her psychic um, technique to sell her painting. That's another painting from Pamela. And then this one here is an image of um, Terry, who was Pamela's surrogate mother. Um, this was taken from the Story of My Life, original edition from 1908. The signed photograph is of the famous actress dressed as Beatrice in Mooch. Adio, about nothing. The book is dedicated to Edie. Original book borrowed from Dorothy Welsh. So it goes through some more photographs here so this is the, this one here is um our adventure silhouette drawing 1908 taken from the story of my life pamela comically illustrates one of the last provincial tours of henry ivering and elaine terry humorous comic book style stretches in silhouette to highlight a train journey from london where the Engine Breaks Down, original book borrowed from Dorothy Walsh. And then this one here is a silhouette drawing, 1908, the second part of Pamela's um, comedic drawing in the story of my life. As the journey recommences, all, arri all, arri sorry, all arrives worn out and exhausted. Pamela toured with... Lycom Group, helping with um, stagecraft and bit parts. Original book borrowed from Dorothy Welch. Let's see. There's quite a lot of um, pictures here. So, you've got above left is the Russian Ballot, 1913. Pamela illustrated Elin Torrey's book with black and white pen drawings, not popular with everyone for the ballot um, optimised vibrancy and colour. And then the above right, which is this one, is Lee Cavanell. The, the ballot ruses performed performed this ballot by Scrookman, which captured Pamela's imagination. Set at a masked ball. And then the bottom left, which is this one here, is um, Perret and Papillon, the ballet premiered in 1910. Terry wrote a, that, the that the comedy in Le Carnival was a very high order, more acting and pantomime than dance. And then this one here is um, a ballet by Rimisky Kavoski portrays horror and violence. The emotions invoked a sensu sen sensuality and cruelty in a dazzling tale from Arabian Nights of a Sultan and his wives. So, 
this one here is a photograph of a WSPU meeting from May 1930. Pamela was not known as an active suff suffragette, more of a suffragist, but she voluntarily voluntarily contributed to the pol political art of the suffragette Aitla to aid the cause of S WSPU, the Women's Library Collection. And this is at the London School of Economics. And then this one here. This is when um, Pamela and Nora Lake first moved to Booth. They lived in a course land at Upton. Um, their cliff top res residence offered a stunning view, but for two ill ladies, it was not ideal. So they moved to what is now Bencon Inn, once a gentleman's residence, then converted into flats. And this picture here is um, Father Dobeles from Pamela's Letters, held at Plym Plymouth Diocese. The Belgian priest, Father Dobeles, I think, I think this is just his, probably this is um funeral thing. So there's quite a few pictures here. This is the attic room. Um, at Park Garkland, Cross Common. The lizard is thought, to, is thought by the current owner to be where Pamela painted and conducted tarot readings. No evidence has yet been born. P Pamela's continued interest in tarot, which would have been incompatible with her Catholic faith. And then this one here is um, Park... Garland on the Lizard was Pamela's first and last real home for around 20 years where she tried to continue the Catholic mission started by Victoria Roberts, an attractive residence. There was a stone pond and an orangery outside. That's that one there. And then this picture here, the top one, is an image from a postcard of Pamela's Catholic Church on the Lizard. Teeny, but appropriately set out. Pamela went to great efforts to create her chapel. And then this one here is Canaan's Village, close to Park Garland in Canaan's Cove, now owned by the National Trust, now considered to be the most beautiful stretches of coastline of coastline in the southwest. This photograph is from 1920, around the time Pamela first moved to the Lizard. And there's just two more pictures here. So there's this one here, which is um, Pamela's chapel. It is sadly now derelict, with permission to convert into dwellings. And this one here is the kitchen um, of Park um, Garland, 2018. In this room, Angie Hodds of the Catholic History Society said she felt the hairs rise on, her, on the back of her neck and she felt close to tears, but it was not a scary feeling. So that's about it. I'll just read you, you a bit from the, from the back page as well. Pamela Common Smith is the most mysterious artist behind the most renowned tarot deck in the world, who has been forgotten about for many years. In a re revival of interest in aristocratic artists and accessible tarot, curiosity about Pamela is now on the ascend, ascendant. But there are still many unanswered questions, especially concerning her later life. Born in London to American Park parents, Pamela was a prolific illustrator and artist who, who mixed with the great and good of art and theatre, among them W.B. Yeats and Bran Stalker, adopted by actress Elaine Terry. She spent some years with Lycombe Theatre crowd, also working as an exotic storyteller. Known as Guzzi Lenja in Bohemian London, people have questioned her sexuality. 
her ethnic origins and alleged dismissal, assuming her to be biracial and lesbian. The biggest mystery of all is why she converted from mysticism to Catholicism in 1911, removing herself from vibrant London to be isolated lizard in the west of Cornwall. There living in a reclusive obscurity. She promoted Catholicism in a heavy non-conformist era before moving to Bude in her 60s. When it's got here, Dawn G. Robertson grew fascinated with the acclaimed tarot artist Pamela Coleman Smith while researching and writing her last book, Secret Bude, about the beautiful coastal town of Bude, where Pamela died in 1951. A five-time graduate and mother of five, Robinson previously worked as a teacher, a lecturer, freelance feature writer in Lancashire. Now a, a hyper-local publisher in Bood, Robinson and her family moved to the southwest in 2010. Robinson now teaches creative writing for, to adults in Bood and is researching her next book. So it's got here eBay, um, ebook available on Kindle Store, iBook Store, Nook Press and Google Play. So this is my new book, Pamela Carmen Smith, tarot artist. Can't wait to start reading it. I will leave a link for this book in the description bar. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.